Hello everyone. In this video, you are going to learn about the basic tips to identify the histology slides. This is the first video in the histology series. So in this we will be mainly going through the how to identify the epithelium and glands which help us to identify the general and both systemic histology slides. So in the next video which is already uploaded in which you can able to identify the general histology slide by using a flow chart by the exclusion of one one slides. Then in the subsequent video you will be able to identify the systemic slides in the same systematic approach flow chart. So as I already said we will be seeing about the mainly the epithelium that is the simple epithelium compound epithelium and the glands. If we take the epithelium which is divided into simple and compound epithelium based on the number of rows of cell. If the all the cells of the epithelium lying on the basement membrane that means simple epithelium that is a single row of cells. If there is two or more row of cells then it leads to the compound epithelium. In the simple epithelium based on the shape of the cells we have classified into squamous, cuboidal, columnar, pseudo-satified columnar epithelium. Then in the compound stratified squamous non-keratinized. Okay, here the naming is based on the shape of the topmost layer of the cells as there is multiple layer the shape of each layer will vary. So based on the topmost layer we have named it. So uh, there are several types like stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal, stratified columnar, transitional but uh, in the slide identification we need to know stratified squamous non-keratinized same stratified squamous keratinized then the transitional epithelium these three is enough for you to identify the both general and systemic histology slides both are stratified squamous in which one is non-keratinized other is keratinized then transitional epithelium so we will see one by one how to identify these epithelium we will start with the simple squamous and cuboidal epithelium so this is actually a slide of kidney which has the glomeruli and surrounded by the PCT and DCT. We no need to go in detail about the kidney slide now. So first here we will focus on the how to differentiate simple squamous from the simple cuboidal epithelium. Okay. So as per the textbook we can't able to identify the outline clearly. Okay. So you need to identify the epithelium based on the shape of the nucleus. Okay. So Try to observe closely in the Bowman's capsule in the outer layer here. Can you able to see the flattened nucleus okay, which is hematoxylin in color, okay, bl bluish. Okay, can you able to see the flattened nucleus? So this is the simple squamous epithelium. So compare it with the simple cuboidal epithelium which has the rounded nucleus okay so here whatever the rounded nucleus which you can able to appreciate is the cu simple cuboidal and here whatever the flattened nucleus which you can able to appreciate is the simple squamous epithelium so here again you can able to appreciate the simple squamous epithelium then this is the simple cuboidal epithelium so it is more important for you to know how to draw these epithelium in the examination so all the simple squamous epithelium will be lying on the basement membrane and there will be only elevation where there is nucleus are present okay as i already said nucleus of simple squamous epithelium will be flattened and elongated and very thin cytoplasm you can able to appreciate surrounded by surrounding the nucleus Sim the simple cuboidal the height and width of the cells are equal to each other so it is like a kind of square in two dimensional and cube in the three dimensional with the central rounded nucleus okay so as i already said you can't able to appreciate the cell outline you can able to differentiate the epithelium based on the shape of the nucleus so you can able to appreciate the 
here the elongated nucleus so simple squamous and these are all the line by simple cuboidal as it has the rounded nucleus then coming to the simple columnar epithelium here again as it is simple so it's all the cells are lying on the basement membrane this is the luminal side so here the basement membrane is there here also the luminal side basement membrane okay so cells are arranged in a single row and you can able to see the elongated nucleus which is close to the basement membrane okay so this is a schematic representation here the height of the cell is more than the width and nucleus are elongated and towards the basement membrane so here also in a, a bit uh, low power you can able to appreciate there is a single row of nucleus which is present okay so these are the simple columnar and you can able to appreciate the uh, even if you are not able to appreciate the shape of the nucleus you can see all the nucleus are close to the basement membrane this is one more clue so this is a simple columnar epithelium then coming to the pseudo stratified as the name indicate it is pseudo that means falsely misinterpreted as a stratified because here the nucleus are appear to be in a two row that is more than one row so it's supposed to be a stratified but if you closely observe in the high power you can able to appreciate there is a only single layer that means even though the nucleus are appear to be in a double layer all the cells are resting on the basement membrane this is possible this is one more slide okay this is possible because there are cells of two different heights are there okay the basal cells are almost like a cuboidal and these tall cells are like a columnar okay so these basal cells will be having a rounded nucleus at one level and these tall columnar cells will be having a bit elongated nucleus at different level in between sometime we may get the goblet cells these empty spaces are the goblet cells and there there may be some surface modification in this pseudo stratified columnar epithelium which is mainly present in the respiratory tract where it has a cilia okay can you able to appreciate some kind of brush border okay so this is a cilia this is in the male reproductive tract here it will be having the stereocilia which is bit longer than the cilia present in the respiratory tract so this is how you, you will identify the pseudo stratified columnar epithelium then coming to the stratified squamous epithelium so there are two type i have already said which is keratinized or non keratinized okay before going into that let me say how to identify the stratified squamous epithelium at first usually the stratified squamous epithelium will be having a wavy basement membrane see this is some kind of wavy basement membrane which interlock with the underlying tissue okay and if as i already said in the squamous stratified squamous epithelium this squamous is the top post layer okay in the stratified epithelium the cells are having different shape from the basement membrane to the luminal side or to the superficial layer the shape are keep on changing so in the top most layer if you see the cells the cells are flattened having very flattened nucleus you compare this with the nucleus present here okay here in the beginning it is bit elongated then rounded then it's becoming decrease in size in the superficial layer it becomes flattened that means squamous okay so the topmost cell is the squamous cell so the name given is the stratified squamous okay in the low power you can able to appreciate again this wavy basement membrane which interlock the epithelium with the underlying tissue so this is one of the easy feature to identify the stratified squamous epithelium this wavy basement membrane is present in the keratinized one also here you can't able to see any uh, additional layer on top of the squamous layer if it is a keratinized see from here to here you can able to appreciate the nucleus here the flattened nucleus are there then just above this level you can't able to appreciate any nucleus okay these are the watermark don't confuse with this so beyond this level you can't able to appreciate the nucleus from here to here this is a squamous cell okay this 
is the keratin layer which is devoid of nucleus okay this is a, only the keratohyaline protein again as this is a stratified squamous epithelium you can able to see a baby basement membrane actually this is a slide of thick skin where the thick layer of keratin is present as it is a wear and tear epithelium stratified squamous epithelium it should have proper interlocking with the underlying structure that, that is the dermis so there is a interlocking dermal papillae you can able to appreciate okay so wherever even in esophagus you will be having stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium there are also you you can able to appreciate this interlocking appearance okay so this is a typical feature of stratified squamous epithelium there is only one exception where this wavy appearance is not there that is the slide of cornea okay in the slide of cornea you will be again having a typical appearance of stratified squamous epithelium you can able to appreciate the change in shape of the nucleus and multiple layer on topmost layer is flattened but you can't able to appreciate that wavy nature because here in the cornea the main function is for transparency maintaining the transparency so if there is a irregular arrangement it will disturb the refractive power of the cornea so it is arranged in a regular fashion so this is the only place where you will be having a stratified squamous epithelium with the flattened almost flattened basement membrane then coming to the next epithelium this is a transitional epithelium otherwise known as urothelium here the shape of the topmost layer is changing from time to time that is when the bladder is full it will be flattened if it is relaxed or empty bladder then it will be again rounded okay so what is how to differentiate this from the stratified squamous it's easy see this is the basement membrane from here the cells are arranged even in the topmost layer you can able to see the rounded nucleus so this is the typical feature sometime you may have binucleated cells also so there there may be two nucleus in the same cell okay so this is the feature of the transitional epithelium so this epithelium present in the kidney ureter urinary bladder okay then moving to the glands so basically there are two types of glands are there one is serous and mucous sometimes both are mixed together so we'll use the word serous mucous or mixed salivary gland okay so see this is the mucous gland this is the serous gland so how will differentiate this mucous glands will be having a almost a tall cells where the nucleus are pushed to the base see nucleus are pushed to the base and cell cytoplasm is bit clear okay you can able to see the clear cytoplasm okay so this is the lumen if you come to the serous gland serous gland is like darkly stained when compared to this cytoplasm the serous gland is darkly stained and the nucleus are in the center here you can able to see rounded nucleus in the center okay so easy way to differentiate in the mucous gland the nucleus are pushed to the periphery and the cytoplasm is clear cytoplasm is clear see once again here cytoplasm is clear nucleus are pushed to the close to the basement membrane this is a one mucous acne if you come to the serous acne the cytoplasm is darkly stained then nucleus are rounded and in the center okay so if you can able to identify the serous and mucous glands and the epithelium almost half of the histology identification is already over so with this knowledge try to identify this slide can you able to see more than one layer of nucleus but if you see the total thickness of the epithelia it is very less so it is a single layer this is the basement membrane this is the luminal side this is a single layer of epithelium but appear to be a multiple layer and what is this this is the goblet cell and even in the topmost uh, luminal side here you can able to see some kind of cilia hair like appearance so this is the typical feature of pseudo stratified columnar epithelium with goblet cells and the cilia also and along with that can you see some glands in the submucosal region see here this is the typical feature of mucous gland this is the typical feature of serous gland then next we will see the cartilage everything in the 
next video so this is a highland cottage so if you put all these three together then you can identify this slide as a slide of trachea so in the subsequent two video i will be covering the remaining things and giving you the flow chart how to identify the histology slide by rule outing one by one so i won't i won't be repeating this epithelium and gland so uh, i feel this is important video for the remaining two so the next you go through the video that is the uh, systematic approach with the flow chart for the general histology so you can finish the bone cartilage blood vessels lymphatic system connective tissue and blood vessels thank you for watching subscribe to our channel for more related videos